Doesn't the Bible say not to judge? That's a scripture even unbelievers know by heart. But how do you explain when Jesus said this? Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. To figure this out, let's take a look at the most popular misquoted scripture of all time. Do not judge anyone, anytime, for any reason. Yeah, that's not Jesus. That's just how we like to quote it, and then it gets spread around like a disease. But here's what Jesus really said. Judge not that you be not judged. From this one isolated scripture, I can see how people think Jesus is telling us not to judge anyone, anytime, for any reason. But let's keep reading to see if this is an accurate understanding. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with what measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Okay, now the picture is starting to come into focus. If I do decide to judge someone else, I better be prepared to receive the same kind of judgment in return. Let's keep reading because Jesus uses an example to help us understand. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? To understand scripture, it's crucial to know who it was written to. At first, it seems like Jesus is talking to everyone. It seems like he's saying, hey, nobody judge, so we can all live our lives unchecked by those around us. But Jesus wasn't giving this instruction to everyone. He was actually talking to a specific group of people. Hypocrites. He even calls them out by name in the very next verse. Hypocrite. First, remove the plank from your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Whoops, maybe I should have hid that second part. I mean, since we're not supposed to judge, we can't have Jesus telling us it's actually okay to remove the speck from our brother's eye. Let's go back to the first verse now that we have more understanding. Judge not that you be not judged. Jesus is basically saying, hey, hypocrites, since you don't want to judge yourself, stop judging others. The problem is hypocrites don't know how to stop judging others. It's how they make themselves feel good about their own mess. But there is a right way to judge. First, judge yourself. Am I pursuing God's will? Am I doing what God asked me to do? Am I obedient to the word of God? And once you establish self-judgment, then you're ready to help someone else out of their mess. Your mindset is completely different at this point. You used to point out people's mess to make you feel better about your own mess. But now that you've judged yourself first, you point out other people's mess only to help them experience the same freedom that you have. So let's look at Jesus' instruction once again. Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. Now we know what Jesus is talking about. Quit judging others to make yourselves look better. Instead, judge with righteous judgment by judging yourself first, pursuing God's will, and then helping others do the same. The damage that's been done to our nation and around the world is a product of the woke church. You see, we bought into the lie that you can't judge anyone, anytime, for any reason. So we let everything go unchecked. We don't call anything out. We sit back and we watch as our fellow believers live in sin and then tell others to do the same. What do you have when you take away righteous judgment? Lawlessness in the church? What if we shut down the court system and got rid of law enforcement? What would happen? Lawlessness everywhere. What does Jesus say about lawlessness? Well, it's part of his description of the end times. Take a look, and then many will be offended. They'll betray one another. They'll hate one another. And then many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Why do we ignore sin? Because the woke church says that's how you love people. But what does ignored sin or lawlessness actually accomplish? The destruction of love. Jesus said, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. It's up to the church to judge with righteous judgment so that true love doesn't completely fade away. It's up to us to push against lawlessness so the gospel can be preached to the entire world. You have a responsibility to judge yourself. You should look at yourself in the mirror every day and ask, are you pursuing God's will? And then you have a responsibility to judge the things around you with righteous judgment. It's time to issue a counterattack. The bottom line is Satan is after our kids and we can't just sit back while he destroys him. We must confront the progressive sexual agenda and reestablish God's design for sex. One man and one woman committed to each other in marriage. The best place to start is in our schools. Parents, you need to stand up and speak out against woke sex education and establish curriculum that teaches God's design for sex. One man and one woman committed to each other in marriage. You also need to teach your kids that a man is a man and a woman is a woman. 
God designed you to be the gender that you are. You will not find fulfillment trying to be something else. Parents, this is up to you. Your kids are going to be lied to at school. They'll be told they can choose their gender and it's okay if they're gay and on and on it goes. And I hate to nail you to a wall right now, but if your kids buy into that nonsense, it's because you, as their parent, have failed to fill their ears with truth from God's word. So start now. Tell them the truth every single day of their life. As many times as they hear the lies at school and on TV, they need to hear the truth from you. So keep saying it and keep saying it. Parents, you were made for this. Is it a challenge to raise kids? Yes. But God has equipped you to not just survive until you become an empty nester, but to mentor your children to become mind-blowing men and women of God. Your kids are meant to walk with you through life, not be pushed aside while you live your life. There's no better time than now to invite your kids to go with you on this amazing journey called life. These are big assignments that I've just given you. So how do you do this? Well, Jesus gives us the answer. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. With the Holy Spirit comes power and boldness to do what God has asked you to do. You no longer bow down to intimidation, but you show up boldly with the truth and you don't apologize when people don't like it. We can't do this without being filled with the Holy Spirit. So I would like to invite you to enroll in my free online course that will guide you in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. Get access today at JesusAintWoke.com. If this video helped you, go ahead and hit that like button because that'll help this video get out to everyone who needs it. And before you go, I want to make sure we're clear on what Jesus did for you. Jesus gave his life, not just to forgive you, but to free you from your sin. He didn't just pay the penalty of your sin. He took your sin away. You're forgiven. You're free. That's who you are when you believe in Jesus Christ. So go ahead and say this with me. Jesus Christ, I believe in you. Thank you for giving your life to save mine. I'm forgiven. I'm free. I dedicate my life to following you. Now let's follow Jesus together. I have more videos coming your way. Be the first to know by subscribing to my email list at kadeyoung.com. You can also subscribe on YouTube and follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you soon.